Good morning, everybody. I will be with you in just a moment, sharing this to a couple of my favorite places. And we're gonna get started with a really fun project today. Almost there, bear with me. Hope you're having a great Friday. computer seems to be running just a little bit slow, so it's taken just a second to get this done. Almost there. Okay. We are there. Perfect. Okay, let's switch my camera over for a sec. Good morning. Hello, hello, hello. Today is Friday. June 4th, and I am coming to you with a little bit longer live than I normally do. So sit back, make yourself a nice hot cup of coffee or tea. It's time for that second cup, isn't it? And we're going to get started on this really fun project called Farm Charm. So I am going to flip my camera so that you can see both what's in front of me as well as me while we're talking. Let's see if I can get that over there and switch. There we go. So here we go. Before I get started, be sure to hit that S-H-A-R-E tab on your computer or your mobile device so that other people can see what Chalk Couture is all about too. Um, I'm looking at my screen and I'm wondering if my lens is dirty because it looks a little bit blurry. So if it looks a little blurry, let me know and I'll see if I can clean it up just a little bit. But as you can see, I've got some really cute little farm animals here. I've got some ivy. I've got some ribbon over to the side. And I also have another surface that we're going to be using today. It is a, called an Odette chalkboard. If you were with me last, um, not, not last night, but the night before, we also made um, something with another version of this chalkboard. Let me turn it this way. This is just a different size of the Odette board. And we did this really cute summer design on it. So. If you missed it, go back. It was Wednesday night, really fun. We used our paste and pull method and lots and lots of color. So that was really fun. Be sure to watch that again. If you are local to the Springfield, Massachusetts area and would be interested in coming to a workshop to do this project with me, put VIP in the comments and I'll be sure to invite you to join us. So I'm gonna put that aside and just clean off my table just a little bit. Get some of these things out of the way. As you can see, I've been busy cutting some wood pieces and we're gonna make those coordinate with this board that we're gonna be working on as well. So, um, one of the things that doesn't you don't see me doing um, often while I'm live, it's kind of a behind the scenes kind of thing, is learning how I clean my chalkboards off. This is a reusable white chalkboard surface. So I'm gonna show you how easy it is to clean them. Um, our chalk paste is water soluble, so all I'm doing is spraying some water on top of this surface. There we go. I usually will let this sit for just a couple minutes to soften up the chalk paste. As you know, our chalk paste goes on wet, dries hard in a matter of minutes, uh, but you can take it right off and change it if you're using it on a non-porous surface, such as chalkboards, um, wood, metal, or glass. Not wood. Wood is porous. I shouldn't have said that. Um, it does not wash off wood easily. Um, so you kind of consider using it on wood as a permanent situation. So I've got it all wet. Um, normally, like I said, I would let this sit for a few minutes, but since we're live, we're going to do it a little bit faster. I have this. It is a scraping tool available on my website. And what this does is it scrapes off the majority of the paste on your project. It kind of reminds me of when I use my um, my oven cleaner. I have like a self-cleaning oven. And when I am done cleaning it, I'm left with this little residual pile of um, burnt <laughs> food or whatever it is that gets stuck to the bottom of your oven. So it just leaves me a nice little pile. And then I go back in and I wipe anything excess. It's usually like a dust coating in my oven. So this will leave me with a little, a little bit of a residual shadowing, we call it ghosting, and that washes right off too, and I'll show you how that works. So normally this will come up even easier than it is right now, and you can see it's really not that hard, just scraping it off, putting it right into a pile. Not too pretty, I know. 
But let me get some paper towels off to the side here and we'll clean this off. And we're gonna do something totally different on this board. Okay, so I'm just gonna put my paper towel on there and scoop up most of that mess. Beautiful, huh? <laughs> Let me go in and spray it one more time, maybe twice, we'll see how it goes. Wipe that off again. That is how easy our chalkboards clean. Isn't that amazing? So I don't know if you can see it from your angle, but if you look closely, you will see a little bit of a shadow or ghosting of what was on there behind, uh, behind the chalk. So what I'm gonna do is take something called a board eraser. This is a little, normally when you get them, they're beautiful and they're white and they're pretty. I've used this one a lot though. You just wet it down and you rub it over your design, kind of give it a, a little scrub and it takes all that ghosting off. And this works on white chalkboards as well as um, your black ones. You also can use it for cleaning your transfers. It is amazing for that. It's kind of like one of those magic erasers, but there's no chemicals involved. So it's safe for your chalkboards, it's safe for your, um, your transfers. It's also safe for your hands, so you're not gonna have any chemical burns or anything like that from it. So there we go, it's nice and clean and ready for us to go as soon as we're ready. But before that, I think we're gonna start on our animals um, while we let this dry. So I'm just gonna set it aside for now. If you are just hopping in, be sure to say hello. Let me know if you are a first time viewer, if you've been here before. The transfer that I'm using today is called Farm Charm and you can see that we've got a larger area here. We've got a cow, a horse, a sheep, and a pig. So we're going to chalk all of these today, and so this might take just a few minutes. It's not going to take that long, but I'm going to wipe this off a little bit and cut the pieces apart. So this is a cut apart transfer. You're going to see that there are lines on it, and that is where you cut. You don't have to worry about your cutting being perfect um, because it doesn't really matter. It's just kind of a guide as to how to cut your pieces apart. So this part that says Farm Charm is gonna go on the board that we just cleaned off. It's gonna look really, really cool with all of these nice animals. So, let's see, here's the pig. It was funny, while I was cutting out the pig, I noticed the shape looked a bit like a rhino. <laughs> so, it is what it is. It is really a pig. It's gonna be a really cute pig too. So, we've got all our pieces cut apart, and the first thing that I always do when I am working on a cut apart uh, transfer is right on the back. So I'm going to write cow on the back of this one, and I have a horse, and I have a sheep, and a pig. We have all of our barnyard friends, except maybe a chicken. I kind of need a chicken, right? I know I have that in another transfer though. So all of our pieces have been marked, cut apart and marked, but before I put them on my surface, I'm going to take the wood animals that I cut out, if I can find them, got a lot on my desk right now. And what I did is I cut these out of three quarter inch MDF and I painted them white. See what I mean about that looking like a rhino? <laughs> so I have an envelope right here. When you paint um, wood, you're gonna notice that it raises the grain up a little bit, so it's a little bit fuzzy feeling. If you take an envelope or a folded up piece of like computer paper, any kind of paper works as fine sandpaper. Did you know that? Hi, Leslie, how are you today? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this envelope from my uh, gas bill, <laughs> and I'm just gonna kind of rub the surface of my pig and all of the other animals on both sides and it smooths it out like glass. It's amazing. What's up today, Leslie? How are you? Getting ready for the weekend? Okay, there's our one side. You want to do... I'm actually not going to design on both sides of these. I'm just going to do one side but might as well have the other side smooth too. The other edges, which are um, the inside edges, are always gonna be kinda rough, so I don't usually even bother doing those.
So I'm getting ready to do a fair. Leslie, you know all about this. Um, in West Springfield, Massachusetts in a couple of months. And this is actually a project I've been thinking about bringing with me um, so that people can buy a complete collection of the animals, the transfer, and the sign to make on their own. What do you think about that? Probably don't know until you see it done, right? Okay, those are nice and smooth. They feel so much nicer. I can't even tell you. So I'm going to be using a light box today. Uh, I'm going to have to pull my computer over a little bit so that I, you can see what I'm doing with this. Come on over here. Nothing much. Come on over here. I got plenty to do. Um, so this is a light box that I use to put transfers on things that are three-dimensional. Um, if you don't have one, don't worry about it. Don't run out and get one. You can also hold things up to your window or a light and it works just as well. But since I'm doing this, maybe not. <laughs> Since I'm doing this live, it's going to fail. Let me see if I got unplugged here. Not everything seems to be fine. What's happening? My computer crashed too. All right, give me one minute. See what's going on here. Oh, I think I found it if this works. Sorry about that. Okay, well we're having a technical difficulty here. So I guess we won't be using that light box. <laughs> and I can't see your comments either. So let's, let me see if I can change that so I can. Okay. Leslie, if you are still here, could you just comment so that I can see it? Hi, Mary Jane. All right, just in time for my technical difficulties. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my transfer on the animals to start with. Let's start with this cute little cow. So cute. Um, there is this beautiful little, like, fern design on these. They're so pretty. What is going on with my computer? That drives me crazy. So I'm just going to remove the transfer from the carrier sheet. And the first thing I do is see how sticky they are. This is pretty sticky. So I'm going to do something called fuzzing. So you just attach it to a fuzzing towel like I'm using here. Or you can use a bath towel, a dish towel, your t-shirt. Whatever you have that will pick up just a little bit of lint to soften that adhesive a little bit. You don't want it to stick too, too tightly. Um, especially on um, something that's painted. You also want to be careful if you're doing a layered project that you that you fuzz very very well because um, if it's too sticky you can pull up what you've already put on your first layer if you're using it on your second so I'm gonna try to center this as best I can it doesn't have to be perfect I'm just gonna hold this up to my light and I can see that I need to move it down a little bit I wonder what is going on with my computer. Oh, that always scares me when it won't start off. You can also feel around the edges to see how close you are to where you need to be. Let's see, it takes a little longer though. Jeez. Get the horns in, get the nose in, the feet. Not quite. This is much easier with my light box, I'll tell you. See how that looks that's pretty good okay so we're gonna start with the cow and what I'm gonna do is take my mini squeegee and just kind of run it over the transfer there's not a whole lot that's actually sticking to the wood but most of it is around the outer edges as you can see Thanks, Leslie. I don't know what's going on with my computer. I don't like it when it does this, though. Let's see if I can hit my restart button. Hmm. I don't know. We'll figure it out later, I guess. Okay, I'm using the very bottom of my jar of black chalk paste. I thought I had another one upstairs, but I don't. I think that we'll be able to get this whole project done though. Okay, looks good. All right, so let's blow that chalk 
dust off. And you're going to take your mini squeegee. I use um, a mini on most projects that have uh, that are small. You want to try to use the squeegee that fits the project that you're doing um, the best. When we do the, the bigger part of this on the Odette board, I'll use a larger squeegee because it's a larger surface. So I'm just going to put a nice thin coat all over this cow. You only have to paste the white areas. That's where the screen is. And you're pushing your chalk paste through the screen to create that gorgeous design. So there are a lot of detail in our, our transfers. And what makes them different is the detail. Um, you could never get this much detail with a stencil unless you were doing lots of layers. So then you go back over the design and scrape off that excess paste and put it back in your jar. A little bit of horn there I missed. Okay, it is scraped. I try to get most of the lines out that I can see. And then while the, while the paste is still wet, you want to peel it off nice and gently. Don't rip it off like a band-aid. Isn't that adorable? Love it. Okay, I'm gonna stick the carrot in my tablecloth here and move along to another animal. Look how cute that looks. Okay, let's put you here. Maybe we'll do the horse next. Okay, thanks for hitting that S-H-A-R-E tab while you're here, guys. Thank you very much. It does help grow my, uh, my audience when you do that. So again, I'm going to go back in there and fuzz my horse. What do you guys have planned for the weekend? I have, I think I posted earlier, I have not even planted my annuals <laughs> this year. I have a couple of buckets and I have some flower beds out by my pool that I'd like to fill. I just put usually um, impatience in those. I am not the best person for growing gardens, but I try. I guess that's what counts, right? Oh, thanks, Leslie. Let's see how this horse looks. I got that the first shot. How's that? Pardon the dog barking. Must be somebody walking by. Okay. Get some of this black chocolate paste off of here. I've got lots of it on my stir stick and on my hands too. I really get into my work, right? So again, I'm just spreading this over the design. Don't have to worry about covering all of that plast that blue uh, teal surface. Doesn't matter. Don't need to. And scrape. There we go. All right, the peel and reveal. Here we go, let's see what this horse looks like. Nice and easy. And there's our horse. So, let me pull this up close so you can see. Look how cute they look together. We're gonna add some details to these two. Okay, next we have our adorable pig, which does look like a baby rhino, doesn't it? <laughs> That's what I keep thinking. I know, sweet Molly. You're planting too, Leslie? I'm never this late. I guess last weekend I was going to, but it was just rainy and didn't do it. Didn't do it, but my little uh, mini pumpkins are growing in, that I put out back. Wasn't sure what I was gonna plant this year. Last year, I didn't, my garden didn't grow very well. I had tomatoes and a couple other things, but I am not a farmer. But I can tell you that I would never be an animal farmer because I couldn't, I couldn't slaughter. <laughs> I like all my meat from a package from the grocery store, and I don't want to know anything more about it than that. So, if you 
have if I had a pig, baby pig, I would name it and love it, and I could never, ever eat it. I just know myself that well. Okay, let's hold that up to the light. It needs to go south a little bit. Get it south. Goofball. Leslie, I think your friend is missing you up there. Let's check that one. Oh, still not quite right. Okay, that looks pretty good. This is what the light box is really helpful for. I'm using you guys in a little bit so you can see this. Okay, there's our little piglet. Did you guys remember that story when you were a kid um, called Charlotte's Web? <laughs> it was about a little a pig, a runt of the litter, who um, didn't want to go out to slaughter, and he had a rat friend who figured out a way to save his life. It was a pretty good story. I think I actually bought that book for a lot of um, new moms' baby showers that I went to because I thought it was the sweetest story. It's actually a movie too. It was a cartoon movie. Do you guys remember Charlotte's Web? Oh, your dad. So he, what did they, oh, I don't want to ask. So he was a milk, milk cow farmer, right? <laughs> I know that the males um, aren't quite as fortunate, but I know your sister grows you some really fantastic turkeys too, Mary Jane. I could probably do that. I could probably eat a turkey that I raised, but I don't know about any, any mammals. So there's our little pig. Come on there. There's our little pig. And last but not least, our sheep. Where is the transfer? Oh, here it is. Right here. Oops, it's going to have to go that way. Mary Jane, how big... What is the biggest tur size turkey your sister ever grew? Her sister um, lives on a little farm in the town not too far from here, and she also is a dog trainer. He raised a beef cute <laughs> cow and he let it grow old. I think I would too. I, I just mm -mm. can't name it, can't know it. <laughs> Can't know anything, but I know. How big was the largest turkey you've ever stuffed into your oven? She has some unbelievably huge turkeys. Let's see what we got here. Gosh, that's prompt bowed. Well, I'm move it just a smidge. Just our smidge this way. Fifty pounds. Okay. I don't think I could even fit a 50-pound turkey into my oven. Thank you. <laughs> Good luck. Oh, yeah. They're just so sweet. Their eyes just get me every time. Cow's eyes. Turkey's eyes. Uh-uh. Nope. My daughter has um, six. Oh, she, actually, she has eight chickens now. She just picked up two more babies that she's grown since they were tiny and she has fortunately they've all so far been girl hens and our egg layers but I'll tell you they're pets they're all named after Disney princesses and transformers because she has boys so here comes our sheep so yeah they um they get lots of eggs in all different colors because she's got different varieties of chickens There we go. Our barnyard is almost complete. I'm gonna pull them all in so you can see them. And then we'll work on our big sign. There, what do you think? Aren't they adorable? So after these are dry, I'm gonna add, I think I'm gonna add some of this garland around, um, maybe, maybe a couple of their necks. Make a little wreath around their neck and a bow. How cute would that be? So I think these would look adorable in a kitchen. They also make kind of cool toys for kids too. So let's get our farm charm sign out. 
I'm going to use black, but I'm also going to add a little bit of green to this one. Let's see what I have. I thought I had a sage green here. Hold that thought. I'll be checking over here to see if I still have that sage green down here. I did. All right, so we will improvise and use a different color. Oh, here it is. Right where I left it. I have another color called mint, which is pretty. It's a little bit um, more pastel y than I wanted it to be, though. So let's work on this farm charm. So we have a complete set. So I can fuzz this. <laughs> oh, I, yeah, I suppose if you have to take care of them every day. No, I still couldn't. I couldn't do it. God bless your brother. <laughs> All right, I must have, yeah, I do have chalk on my hands because I'm smearing it across my transfer. That's how I roll. Put this on and off a couple of times, and we will complete our collection, at least the chalking, and then we're gonna add, add some details, so. <laughs> Thanks for popping in, you guys. It's great to see you this morning. Trying to find a good balance of when to go live and that sort of thing, because life keeps happening around me. I don't know why, but you know what I mean? Okay. Let's make sure the hangers are on the right side. Everybody knows that it's not hard to do a project on the wrong side of your board when the hangers end up on the bottom. It happens. That's pretty good. Yep, that's pretty straight. Okay, I'm gonna take my squeegee. And then just rub down the areas where the letters are. We're going to do this leaf right here in sage and the rest of it all in black. I wish I had some green ribbon, but I think the green from the around their necks with the that uh, ivy or vine or whatever you want to call it, um, I think that'll look really nice. All right, let's get a larger squeegee out for this job. Come on. So now I'm going to be using my small squeegee. This will cover much quicker than the little one. And get on my hands, of course. <laughs> so again, a nice thin coat. If you are new to the chalk world, um, put it a little heavier than, you, than I am right now because you don't want it to dry before you remove your transfer. So I'm going to do the paste and peel method on this. You can see how that works. Come on, right to the edge. <laughs> Got it. Leslie, you have any little people with you today? You usually do. During the day. All right, so we're going to peel this back. And I'm going to hit it with my dryer for just a second. Peeling it away, nice and easy. Oh, I love it with the black frame, it looks awesome. And we'll dry that for a second. kids today, huh? Okay, we'll let that fall. And I think I'll do the leaf next, right here. See how that sage green looks. I love this color. Isn't that pretty? And then get the tiny squeegee here. She's a little thick. I only need a little bit, so 
so we're gonna make it work trying to avoid that black part that I already did Scrape the excess and a nice thin coat on there. Okay, that looks great. And we'll pull that back again. Oh, I just love that color. So again, I am using a heat tool to dry these. If you are using a regular heat tool, be super careful that you don't heat up your transfer because it will warp it and it will not work the same the next time you try to use it. Just be aware of that. We do have a brand new drying tool on my website. I also have them in my shop if you're interested. Um, that is not as hot, but it does the job. It dries everything up nicely. All right. I'm going to go for another squeegee because this one is healthy. I'm making a mess today. It's because I think I'm at the bottom of my jar and I'm scooping it from the sides. Okay. And we'll cover the last part of this. Now, if you wanted to make this permanent on this surface, as I said before, it is a reusable chalkboard. But if you wanted to make it permanent, you can seal it. Just go to the hardware store and get some, I like the matte um, spray sealer. I don't want it to be shiny, but I just use the matte spray sealer and do a couple really light coats of it and it will be um, good to go, it'll be permanent. Most, most of the time people don't really wash their chalkboards, they'll dust them off maybe. Um, I mean things that they want permanent. They would probably just dust them off but not really scrub them. So that's up to you. Okay, I think we're good. We are done. Look at me, I'm a mess. Gonna need a bath after this. Okay, here we go. A long transfer. <laughs> Almost there. Ta da! I love it. Alright, just attaching these to my tablecloth. I'll go back and wash them in the sink later. Let's cover these jars up. And we will start playing with these um, farm animals a little bit. See if we can jazz them up with some, some of that uh, wired. Vine, I don't know what you call that. Ivy, vines, who knows? <laughs> okay, there's Farm Charm, there's our sign. And here's our cute animals, which appear to be almost dry. So I'm gonna dry them for a minute. Then we'll decorate them a little bit. I see a couple little wet spots. Now, if you are going to put these on your shelves, I don't see that there's any reason to really seal them unless you want to. Um, but if you are going to use these as toys for kids to play with, you'll definitely want to seal them so they don't chip all the paint off. All right, let's start with this cow because I think she looks adorable with a little wreath around her neck. Let's see, I don't want to make it too big or too small. What do you think? Do you like the wreath? Can, does it show up enough? Maybe I'll make it a little bit thicker. See how that looks. Oh, 
I'll have to twist it together a little bit more than that. I feel like that's too much with that much on there. I'm going to make a small one and we'll see how it looks. Got my wire cutters here, not using my scissors on my wire. My gosh, I can't even tell you how many pairs of scrapbooking scissors have been used to cut wire with that no longer cut paper. See how easy that was to twist that together? I'm gonna pull you in a little bit. Let's see, I'll put it against the white so you can see what I'm thinking here for my little cow. Ah, oh, wouldn't a bell be adorable? I wonder if I have one somewhere. I'll have to look. Hold that thought. So there's my little cow. And I might do the horse, too. I think the others will look a little too small. So let's make one for the horse. Of course. Should that one be a little bit bigger? No, too much. Right about there. Boy, there must be a parade going by. If you could hear Molly right now snarling. She's the sweetest dog, but don't walk by our house. She turns into a crazy girl. That fell apart. Nope, it didn't. Okay, move that to the back. And there's our pretty horse with the wreath. I mean, these are not necessary. But I thought they looked kind of cute. And I also have some ribbon here. Let's see how those look with a bow on them. What do you guys think? Wreath or no wreath? Got these. Oh, that's blue. I don't think I like that. I also got some twine. That might look as just as cute. See how that looks. What do you think of the twine? Eh. Nope. I thought I had some red ribbon here. I'll sell where to go. Can I fell off the table. It's really cute blue. Little blue daisies. Nah, their necks are too fat. Okay, well, I'm gonna have to look for some something maybe to accent these wreaths for. This would even look cute at Christmas time. You could put some little red Christmas berries on it. Whatever you want to do. But there is our beautiful barnyard. I hope that you enjoyed our time doing farm charm, and we'll tune in again have any questions be sure to ask them before I forget we have a huge special going on on my website uh, beginning in five minutes um, so you want to check those out if you are a Club Couture member you will also get free shipping so that would be awesome too if you want to check it out at chocouture.com front slash Susan here's my website down below and um, I will be back with some more really fun projects let me know what you think of this one. Again, I was thinking about making some bundles, um, kits to bring with me to some shows that I'm doing. If you think this would be a hit or a miss, let me know. I'd love to know what your, thought, your thoughts are. So that's what I have for you today. I hope you have a wonderful day, a wonderful weekend, and I'll see you again real soon. Thanks for joining me. Bye, guys.